All right, you've got a couple internet connections coming into your business or your data center. You're ready to get started with BGP. Now what? That's what this nugget is all about. You will understand how to get the BGP ball rolling with the carrier. Because in our situation, I faced that same question. We had a single static route from our level three carrier for our single class C subnet that ran our data center pointing into one of our routers. So do I call all of these other carriers and tell them I want to do BGP? Do I start with level three? Do I go to some outside entity? Give me the flow of events here. Well, what I will say is the primary carrier is your starting point. You could get a ticket opened with these guys and just let them know that's what you're going to do. But the questions they'll ask you We'll just point you right back to here. Here's the flow of events, which really outlines the rest of this series. The first thing that you wanna do before you even contact your primary carrier is to get with Aaron. That's the American Registry for Internet Numbers. Now there are other entities around the world that handle distribution for those regions, but I live in America, so I go straight over to Aaron.net. Now keep in mind, this place is responsible for two major things. The first one is IP address allocations. Now, as you probably know, we are out of IPv4 addresses, so you won't be getting anything from Aaron on those. However, they do now manage the IPv6 address allocations. The second thing is autonomous system numbers. You'll see those abbreviated all the time, ASN. Now that will take some cash to get started, so when we get to that nugget, I'll explain all the fees, what you'll pay up front, what you'll pay annually, yada, yada, yada. That's what you need to register with your primary carrier. So the conversation with them will go something like this. Hi, my name is Jeremy. I'm an authorized user on our account number, blah, 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 blah. We want to set up a BGP relationship with you. Now, some carriers will have a payment structure that surrounds that, as in they'll increase your fees to do that, while other carriers will include that as part of the service. In my experience, the smaller ones will charge you, the larger ones will be included. Now, I would highly recommend that you get BGP established with your primary carrier before you start adding the other carriers. You don't have to do it that way, but that's the simplest way to get started. Now, when it's time to add the other carriers, that's where you'll need an LOA or a SWIP that actually stands for Shared Who Is Project. LOA is a letter of authorization. I mentioned it right up here, Aaron is out of IP addresses. So the only way that you're really getting any decent block to advertise if you don't already have one is to use one from another carrier. In our case, we've got level three who has so graciously given us, <laughs> because we paid him to, this class C block, 63.232.144.0. Well, I'm going to register for my autonomous system from Aaron, which establishes me as an entity on the internet. But in order for me to say I own, quote unquote, that address, the carrier who really owns it needs to authorize it for me. So they'll either give me a letter of authorization or they'll modify the who is record for that address block so that these other carriers can look up and see that I am authorized to be advertising these other carrier addresses as coming from my autonomous system. Now, each carrier will prefer different things. Some of them might not accept the who is record. Some of them will say, well, we don't want an LOA. We want the SWIP record. It's really up to them and their process and you just have to comply with it. Once you get all those authorizations, that's when you can bring up the additional carriers and have that rush of excitement to say, we now have BGP established. Once that's done, then you start your tuning. Remember, outbound traffic load balancing is easy because you control your system. You can say, well, I want some of the traffic to go that way, some of the traffic to go that way. You can control all that with policy routing or even just static routes. It doesn't have to be fancy. But to tune the inbound traffic, so that the rest of the world listens and says, well, we'll prefer that way, and then maybe that way, and then maybe this is the third preference. Or we want to load balance across all of those. That gets a little tricky. The most common way to do that is something known as BGP AS path prepending. Like I said, these steps really outline the rest of the series because each one of these is a process of its own. To be conservative, if you're talking to management and they're like, well, how long is this all going to take? And how much is it going to cost? Because that's really what they want to know. Conservatively, it's going to be about a month. Cost-wise, that's really dependent on the types of carriers you use and what they're going to charge you to use BGP, if they even do at all. Aaron is probably going to run you about maybe five, six, seven hundred dollars up front, and then one, two, three hundred dollars a year. With just that process in your head, you should now be able to get the ball rolling with the carrier. 
Where I want to go from here is to talk with you in another nugget about some of the questions that you should be asking. Some of them apply within your organization and some of them are questions you'll need to have answers to when working with the carrier. Then I want to walk you through the process of getting your first autonomous system from Aaron.